Welcome to the University of Washington Bronchoscopy module on equipment preparation for bedside bronchoscopy. Here we will review the most commonly needed supplies to prepare ahead of time, the basic components of a bronchoscope and how it works, and we'll go over a few common equipment problems and how to troubleshoot them. Note that the specific equipment types or brands will differ by hospital, but the setup we describe here will be similar in most institutions. Before performing a bronchoscopy in the hospital, be sure to plan ahead with nursing to ensure you will have appropriate staffing for moderate sedation. Then collect your equipment, a portable bronchoscopy cart, bronchoscope, and all the supplies you will need for topical anesthesia, sample collection, etc. Many hospitals have pre-made kits for this purpose, and we will review all of the key items in detail. In the room, make sure you have ordered appropriate sedation medications so these will be ready by the time you are set up for your procedure. Use the cord on the back of the bronch cart to plug the cart into the wall socket. You'll then need to plug in the bronchoscope itself. There are two steps to this. First, plug the bronchoscope into the lower unit and then connect the top unit. Let's watch a close-up of that. The end of the bronchoscope has two rods that insert into the lower unit of the machine. The video card then connects to the larger rounded opening indicated here. Make sure the larger rod is on top as you insert the bronchoscope into the lower unit and click it firmly in place. To attach the video card, line up the dot with the line nearest the bronchoscope cord and twist clockwise until it clicks into the second line. Turn on the power to the cart with the very topmost button, and then turn on the lamp by pushing the button on the lower unit. Note you do not need to press the individual power buttons on the top and lower unit of the bronc cart machines. When you're sure your equipment is working, take a moment to lay out all of your tools. Many institutions will have pre-made bags of the equipment you will need for inspection and bronchoalveolar lavage. But in most places, you will have to plan ahead to acquire more specialized tools for biopsies or foreign body retrieval. Let's talk about the equipment you'll be using. This plastic device is called a swivel. It allows you to perform bronchoscopy through the endotracheal tube. You will break the circuit between the tube and the ventilator. This end of the swivel attaches to the endotracheal tube, and this end attaches to the ventilator tubing. This flange then can open and allow you to insert your bronchoscope through the swivel and down into the endotracheal tube, maintaining airflow between the ventilator and the endotracheal tube. You'll see this in action in the later bronchoalveolar lavage video. Before you start the procedure, you want to get your first bolus of lidocaine ready. Lidocaine most often comes in small vials of 2% solution. Label and fill at least two syringes with one cc of lidocaine and several cc's of air to flush the bolus of liquid through the scope. Having more than one syringe ready at a time will allow you to move faster during the procedure. Next, get your saline ready for lavage. For bronchoalveolar lavage, you will want 30 ml aliquots of saline. Even if you are only doing an inspection, it can be helpful to have saline ready in case your vision is obscured while you're in the airways. Spike the saline bag by pulling off the blue tab and inserting the tubing spike. Attach the 30 ml syringe and make sure the stopcock is open to the syringe to draw up 30 mLs. During the procedure, when you remove the syringe to administer the saline, don't forget to turn the stopcock so the bag doesn't leak all over your table. Next, prepare your specimen trap. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but it's helpful to open the trap and apply a patient sticker before you start the procedure. We have had cases of specimens lost for want of a patient sticker because this was left to the end of the procedure when everyone was busy and the step was missed. Here's all your equipment laid out in the order in which you will use it. The swivel, two attachments for the bronchoscope, which we'll show you how to use in a moment, lidocaine with the first two mLs already drawn up into a labeled syringe, lidocaine jelly, which you will apply to the end of the bronchoscope using the gauze just prior to inserting the scope. Saline, with the first 30 ml aliquot already drawn up, and the stopcock on the tubing spike turned to closed. Finally, at least one specimen container already labeled and ready to attach to the bronchoscope. The suction port and button on the bronchoscope are disposable. Here's how to attach them. You'll insert the suction port lower on the handle. 
by pressing firmly until it clicks. The suction button, to which the wall suction attaches and which you will press with your finger to activate the suction, is placed higher on the handle and can be tricky to insert properly. Some providers can get it seated correctly with one hand, but those with smaller hands may need to use both thumbs to make sure it's pressed firmly into place until it clicks. While you're doing the procedure, to obtain lavage specimens, you will attach the specimen trap to the long arm of this piece. The flexible tubing attaches here, and the wall suction tubing attaches to the rigid port here. We'll show you how to use this in real time in the BAL video. Let's talk about the parts and movements of the bronchoscope itself. On the handle of the scope, there's a thumb lever. This, along with rotation of your wrist, is your primary means of directing the scope. You'll see that it's labeled rather counterintuitively. At the bottom, there is a U for up. When you use your thumb to push the lever in this direction, the scope antroflexes. Note that you get nearly 180 degrees of antroflexion if you push the thumb lever maximally in this direction. The other direction is labeled with a D for down. By moving your thumb in this direction, the scope retroflexes, but just over 90 degrees. There are several buttons on your scope. First, the suction button, which you've just inserted. Suction is not applied through the bronchoscope channel until you push this button down. The two buttons on the back of the scope, labeled 2 and 3, do not have functionality on this bronch cart. The two buttons on the front of the scope head are near your index finger while it's holding the scope. This will freeze the image on the screen and take a picture to record that image. Troubleshooting common problems related to the bronchoscope machine setup. Common problems usually revolve around the power supply and the video connection. After you plug in the machine to the wall, make sure that the main power button is on and the lamp button on the lower unit has been turned on. The last user may have turned off the individual power buttons on each of the upper and lower units. Make sure you leave them on at the end of your procedure so the next user only has to press the main power supply button. Regarding the video image, if you are having trouble seeing the picture, make sure that your bronchoscope is properly inserted into the lower unit, the video card is firmly attached to the bronchoscope, and the lamp is on. If you see a color-blocked image on the screen, it's likely that the video card itself is not properly inserted into the top unit on the cart. Make sure that the surface of the card that has the word up actually faces up and that the card is inserted all the way into the slot. After your procedure is complete, be sure to follow your hospital policy regarding cleaning and disposal of the bronchoscope, bronchoscopy cart, and supplies. Most carts or equipment areas will have a specific place to return used scopes, labeled with patient information for infection control tracking purposes, and other used equipment.